We're trained to use drugs and surgery as doctors. We are reimbursed to use drugs and surgery, so we use drugs and surgery. It's the old Abraham Maslow. If the only tool you have is a hammer, you see everything as a nail. I'm on the nutrition working group at the American College of Cardiology about a year and a half ago. We did a survey of how much nutrition are doctors now given in their regular course of training on average in medical school. So it turns out it's about four hours a year. And even most of that is on like vitamin C and scurvy and stuff like that. And if you say, how much nutrition training is the average cardiologist given in four years of cardiology fellowship training? It's none, it's zero. Efforts to motivate people to change out of fear are not really sustainable. What's sustainable is joy and pleasure and love and feeling good. And because these biological mechanisms are so dynamic, when you make big changes, it's sometimes easier than making small ones because when you make big changes, you get big benefits. You feel so much better so quickly in ways that matter. It reframes the whole reason for making changes from fear of dying or fear of a heart attack or stroke or cancer coming back or whatever to joy and, and love and feeling that you know you think more clearly you have more energy you feel better and how quickly that can occur we did a randomized trial with the memorial sloan kettering cancer center in new york we found that the progression of early stage prostate cancer could often be slowed stopped and sometimes even reversed by making these lifestyle changes then what's true for prostate cancer will likely be true for breast cancer why is that? What are some of the mechanisms that might affect that? So we did a study, which we published with Craig Venter, who was one of the first to decode the human genome. We actually did biopsies of the normal tissue of men in these studies with early prostate cancer. And we found that over 500 genes were changed, 501 to be exact. In every case, in simple terms, turning on the good genes and turning off the bad genes, particularly down-regulating what are called the RAS oncogenes. And as you know, oncogenes are genes that tend to promote cancer and particularly the genes that promote prostate, breast, and colon cancer were switched off in just three months, which I thought was amazing. And then we did a study with Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn, who got the Nobel Prize for her pioneering work with telomeres of our chromosomes that regulate cellular aging. They're like the plastic tips on the ends of a shoelace that keep your shoelace from unraveling, they keep your DNA from unraveling, and over time, when the DNA replicates, the telomeres over time get shorter, and as our telomeres get shorter, our lives get shorter, and the risk of premature death from the most common forms of heart disease, cancer, and all these chronic conditions go up proportionate to that, including Alzheimer's disease. It wasn't like there was one set of diet and lifestyle changes for heart disease, a different one for prostate cancer, a different one for type 2 diabetes. And I realized it's because they're not so different from each other. I was trained, like most doctors, to view heart disease, diabetes, prostate cancer, and so on as being fundamentally different diseases, different diagnoses, different treatments. But I realized they all share the same underlying biological mechanisms, things like chronic inflammation, overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system during times of stress, changes in immune function, changes in the microbiome, the 100 trillion cells that live in our gut, and oxidative stress, and angiogenesis, and so on. And each of these biological mechanisms is directly influenced by what we eat, how we respond to stress, how much exercise we get, and how much love and support we have. Again, to reduce it to its essence, eat well, move more, stress less, love more. Again, pulp with plant-based diet, low in fat and sugar, Stress less, stretching, breathing, meditation, other yoga-based techniques. Move more, find a kind of exercise you like, because if you like it, you'll do it. Spend more time with your friends and family or loved ones. In our studies, we have support groups. And we're now in the midst of doing the first randomized trial to see whether these same lifestyle changes may stop or perhaps even reverse the progression of early stage Alzheimer's disease. And I think we're in a place with Alzheimer's very reminiscent of where we were with heart disease 40 some odd years ago when I first started doing studies there. In other words, back then, as now, it was thought the best you could do with lifestyle was to slow down the rate at which you get worse. With heart disease and other diseases, we found you know, kind of like ounce of prevention, pound of cure. It takes a lot to reverse a chronic disease. That's why we were the first to show that in a randomized trial, because people didn't go far enough. If you're trying to prevent disease, moderate changes may be enough, but if you're actually trying to undo or reverse something, it takes really big changes.